hi i'm back i'm so sorry i'm so sorry guys i'm so sorry um dennis's network was acting out okay welcome dennis thank you for coming again it's fine let's just hope this works out let's just hope this works out i have to invite um yano terry thank you okay uh, so i'm accepting yano lua's request now password shout out <laughs> shout out to you <laughs> gosh what's going on what's going on now with today's network <laughs> are there witches are wizards <laughs> don't mind me okay let's do this let's do this Mm hmm I okay. We started off hey. 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 Hi. Yeah, much better now. Perfect. Is it much better? Yeah. Much better. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> The witches and the wizards fast will not work today. They lost. Amen. <laughs> I'm so Amen. Sorry. I'm, I'm so it's sorry. It's not your fault. It's okay. It's okay. It's not it's your fault. Me, so let me let me tell you something, um, Dennis. For Nigerians, it's once there's a network problem, we just laugh about it. So it's totally fine, trust me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it, Tiano. What are you trying to say? Represent your country mm -hmm. well. I'm actually wearing mm -hmm. to represent my country. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is, you like my top. It's actually African. Is it? Yes, it's African. It's very, nice. it's very, Thank nice. you. very vivid. Yeah. It's an Afro thing, you know, African. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, as, as a matter of fact, as now I've been living for almost a year with Julius and we, we've been talking quite a lot about the many cultural attributes, both of my uh, country and my culture. So, uh, yours, uh, Julius, yeah. also from Nigeria, okay. as you are, right? I mean, you, you are friends with Julius. So, yeah, uh, yeah and uh, yeah, yeah. we actually came to <laughs> conclusions, which I will later point out as we start uh, making a conversation about our main topic today. Um, there's actually okay. a very... Uh, uh, there, there's many similarities in the way that both your country and my country thinks and perceives things that have something to do okay. with respect to the topic that we're going to discuss. It's wow. actually very interesting yeah. how many similarities our cultures have. I was very surprised when I found out. Wow, cool. Cool, that's really nice. Thank you. And actually, it takes someone that is really open-minded to see that. You know, like regardless of the color of our skin, no matter what, we, we are still similar in a number of ways. No, you get what I mean? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And so I, I must say thank you for that, for acknowledging the fact that everyone is human regardless. No, no matter absolutely, absolutely. no matter what. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I'll give you a clap for that. <laughs> Okay, so Ian Oluwa says you can call her Esther if that name is too long for you. You can call her Esther. Don't is call that me Iyanu. Okay. Okay. Ah, which one again? You can, you can call it Iyanu. Iyanu is fine, actually. So, yeah. Can you say Iyanu? Iyanu. Mm. No. E. E. Are you e. kidding me? No, no, no. Not, not e. <laughs> e. T. No, e. <laughs> you see, then you just want to talk about e. it. Yo, how, how about you write oh, it? Oh, God, CJ. So, no, I can't write it in the comments. I have to pronounce it for you to get it. It's e. Ya. No. E. Ya. No. Something like that. 
Okay, okay, okay. What time I, you'll get it? Don't worry. You know, that, that's that's <laughs> one thing that uh, actually separates our cultures: the names and pronunciations. I mean, it's uh, like, like uh, Julius. I call him Julius, but his whole name is Olatunji, and even Donat. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Oh Yo. my goodness! Why? Oh! Gosh, I was really wow. enjoying that conversation. God, it's it's also been difficult. <laughs> So Dennis, we actually lost what you said. So, we, yeah. we um, everything we I, heard, I, we heard to you the, where you mentioned yeah. uh, Sunji. Nah, this network is oh, awful. Yeah. The network is really yeah. awful. I think he was kind of acting up too when I had Sunji on the live, but I think I don't know what Sunji did. Cause I, I recall, yeah, I recall yeah. my voice was reverberating. You know, I was hearing myself, and even after I watched the video again, it was the same thing. So I guess it's, it's the network around yeah. that place. Ah, Are you part of the room? That. You might want to mute you. What? Again. Maybe he might want to move to another part of his room or something. Yeah, I don't know if you see him, but it's nothing kind of let off his terrible. Yeah, yeah, it could be the it could be the particular the spot he's seated in. I actually messaged Tunji to help out. So I I don't know what's going on. Trust me, I, okay. I really don't I don't know what's going on. And I don't know if I should add Tunji to the live. If you, you, if you use to use phone. Yeah, I think we can do that. If that would work. I hope. I hope Sunji is the one here. Because I saw him. He joined us at first. Then I don't know if he's actually still online. Because this this network issue is actually discouraging people. Mm. Mm -hmm. We'll solve it though. Just hold on guys. Yeah. Oh, also oh, more of my friends are joining. This is nice. Yeah, so let's just continue with it because this, the, I remember the first time we had this, the, the second guest could not join at all because of his network. Like, okay. it was so bad. So, and we continued. Yes, we got continue that then. participated. So, yeah, we could just continue. We, we don't know. We we'll have to just make it as fun as 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 it comes, you know. I trust you, Anaya. You know you are no problem. <laughs> no problem. So as I was saying, the whole men, men the whole female, 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 women, women empowerment thing is what um and now I you know you know I don't know I of course I know you you and I we have lots of male friends. You know yeah like lots of male friends. Okay Dennis we'll, we'll wait for Dennis, you okay yeah okay okay we'll continue then so uh we have lots of male friends and then i personally i don't know maybe because i just i listen to what they say and i listen to what they don't say do you get what i'm saying like mm -hmm. they talk with so much anger sometimes sometimes and beneath the anger, you see that there is this pain of, I just want to be heard. We just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. It's not about mm -hmm. you people alone. You know, we respect yeah. you people, but can you, it's, it's, we are not cheating yeah, you. Let it go and let us hear them. Let people also hear us. Let people know we're also struggling. I would love to, um, you know, tell people what our problem is. Exactly. Exactly. So, I found out that I would have conversations with my male friends and then I keep hearing the same thing from person to person to person to person to person. To person. Uh oh. And some it, what's going on with your network tool? Hey God. Hey, hey God. 
Okay, TJ, you're okay, back. Okay, you're back. What just happened? You are back. Your network has gone for a bit at my end. No, I'm fine here. Nothing. I'm, I'm good here. It was at my... Okay, it was at my end. It was showing me that your network is loading and all of that. But it's fine now. You I can't even... Same thing happened here. I, I guess I really don't know what happened. Same thing That's here. Let's just, let's just continue. Okay, so... So, like, you know, it even went as bad as some of them picking up fights with me, you know, and then we'll talk. And I, because, like you said, okay, so that brings me to you, like, because I was looking for a female that is not, is not, think, doesn't think the way the, the normal, I don't want to use the word. <laughs> Exactly. I was looking for someone very, very intelligent, someone that can reason logically and not be too emotional about this topic. You know, because I know a lot of females have gone through stuff with females. And so mm -hmm. if they talk, they can be like a, like bias, you know. They can be like a form of bias. And that would be so offensive. So I needed someone that could stand in the middle, that could bridge the gap, that could be a female at the same time, empathize with the males because of where she's coming from. So mm -hmm. I just I just knew at the instance that you know what I think Yano is the best candidate for for this. And I, Thank <laughs> you for that trust in you though. <laughs> what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you for that trust in me. It's um, very, very, it's a very strange um, belief to have in me. And um, let's just, I hope I'm able to live up to the standard uh -huh. that you set for me. I trust you. <laughs> it's not you. It's not you. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the first topic. Hi, Tunji, okay. what's going on? Tunji, should we add you to the line? Should we add it to the live today? Okay, so um, are, are those your friends talking on um in the background? Yes. Um. Okay, because I can hear them. That's why. Oh, okay. Um, we're very sorry, friends, but if you really want to join us, just. Take your phones and join us on Instagram, please. <laughs> they are they are doing something. They are talking. They are having another conversation entirely. So I don't I think can. they would want to join. Join. Okay. Cool. Okay. No problem. So let's go to the first one. So this one is a very interesting one. Okay. Danny said to is not home. Wow. That's serious. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, let's let's just continue, right, I let just continue there. The first one, men has come. Men has come. So let's talk about that. Do you think men has come? You know, no. they, say, they say men has come. So when people make that statement, men has come, what I prefer to tell them is come has no gender. I heard, okay, mm. so this morning <laughs> I was on chat with someone. <laughs> so this morning I was on I was having this WhatsApp chat with someone and sharing is he shared a very crazy experience of a lady whom he met during youth service. Um and then I think she was she was some years older than him and then he got to know yeah. that she was the, the week she got to know that he was some years older than him, she yeah. decided to pin pregnancy on him. She was already what? engaged, about to get married. Yes was engaged, about to get married, and she decided to pin the pregnancy on him. And then he told, she told her later, she told him later that um, he was just sort of lucky that she didn't do that. And then her husband, to be, came around, saw the guy, and even said, ah, guy, thank you for taking care of my wife. And he's like, uh, she's my girlfriend. How is she your wife? So you see what I said? Scum has no gender. Every gender available on Earth is capable of being a scum. Anybody can be mean to anybody. Anybody can do anything that will hurt the other person. It's I like to see it as a human thing. We are all capable of um, evil. We are all capable of hurting one another. We are all also capable of hurting ourselves. What only wow. draws that line is the amount. I wouldn't say the amount of good, but the amount of love you have 
excuse me, the amount of love you have in your heart, actually, that's where I like to see it. Hmm. I'm listening. Yeah, so uh, for me, it's, it's one thing to, yeah, some people based on their experience, I understand that people have these experiences that when you hear their stories, it's enough to say, oh, man, I've come. And then you also hear what the men would say, and they'd be like, oh, women have come. So now you see why I'm saying anybody's capable of being a scum, if we're being honest. Because what you might have done that you probably did not think was very, very, um, what you call very serious or something that yeah. people should take offense um, over, uh, take offenses and um, take offense yeah. about, is also what someone else will do. And it's, it's like you're cutting their art into, their art into pieces. So what someone else can take and, you know, just wave it over is what someone else can mentally damage the whole lot of some other people, rather. Some yeah. men are calm, not quite. Everyone, everyone is capable of calmness. So what we just <laughs> all is to, what I can, yeah. I tell people that I am capable of, of being a scum. You are capable of being a scum. The only thing that probably makes the difference, the only thing that makes the difference is the fact that we probably... Keep choosing every day to be a better person and not to be a terrible person. That's the out. That's the outright difference between both genders. Wow, that's a very valid. Thank you, Panini. Okay, speaking words of truth. It always depends on the person. Okay, um, that's a very very um, I love it. So Dennis also commented. He made a comment the other time and said, all oh, people, what did he even say? He said, all, oh, all people has come. Hi! That's true. Everyone is capable of being a scum. True. 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 I agree. I agree. So it depends on the side. So do you believe that people have both the scum and the angel? Right. Of course. That's why I said we are all see it's human nature to now I believe in the concept of yin yang, which means in every good there's evil and in good in evil there is good. Now you can have an um what what's that word now? You can decide to want to do something, your intentions are good, your actions might be a bit bad, and in the end results can be something totally unexpected. It might also turn out good, it might also turn out bad. But one thing I always tell people is if you choose, if you chose to lean into the dark side of you today, you're not yet a very terrible person. If you choose to lean into the good side today, you're also not totally a good person every day until the day when every time people hear from you, they can say, oh, this person has bad side, but they choose to always, we are all capable of evil. Let's not forget that everyone is capable of evil. What's going on? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I, I said everyone is capable of being evil. Everyone is capable of also being good. But what makes the difference is your choice. If you decide that, okay, you know what? Despite all I've seen on earth, despite everything that has happened to me so far, I still choose to not change who I am at my core. So if I'm at, at my core, I'm a very given person. I'm a very nice, caring person. And then someone has hurt me so bad that naturally, I probably should not even continue the kindness. Then it means you were a bad person just waiting to exhibit that badness. Mm. That's the way I see it. Some people will say, oh, it's totally fine to become evil. Some people will tell you it's... Hmm. Hello? 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 What's going on today? What's, what's with the weather? See the weather... Can you hear me now? Yeah. So I like to think that we are all capable of evil, basically. But our repeated choices is what can... I don't, I don't even like to think anybody's good or evil. I like to think we're all capable of both. So whatever it is you do, just know that at the end of the day, whatever we do is an, is an accumulation of choices. And that at the end of the day, it's, it's a cause and effect thing. So if you're good to people or you're good naturally, you're somehow going to repeat at the latter part of your life or at any point in your life, basically. 
Okay, cool, cool, cool. Nice point. Thank you. So, do you think the society has made men because you know we're talking about masculinity now. And so when they say men has come there's a reason why they yes. must have have said that statement several times. Do you understand? They will say it in Yoruba. Hey god, this network. Eshanuwa. Eshanuwa. Okay, you're back. So they say it Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Yanu? I can Yanu, hear can you, but my network is acting up. Yeah, we don't know what the problem is today. This doesn't happen. We don't know okay, what the problem is. Okay, it's better now. Okay, cool. So, they usually say in Yoruba language that, or let me say it in English, that when you see a male, and you see snake. You should kill Let the snake walk the kill the guy. The guy and then leave the snake. They say it a lot. Uh, so they must have been a reason why this they made such a statement. Hey God. Hey. At this point, it's like I'll have to allow whoever wants to join this conversation. Because this conversation is, is sweeting me and I'm not ready to leave this life. Please, guys, if you want to join this conversation, send it a request. At this point, because I love this, I love this conversation. It's, it's sweeting my heart. I don't want this to go on. God help us. Help. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me try and add them together. We don't know what we don't know what is going on, but we hope that it's for the good. This has never happened. The first time it happened, we we're able to do some control. So let's up, let's up, let's up, let's up. <sighs> okay, I'm back. Welcome Sorry, back. Sorry, network over here also. Ha -ha. Jesus Christ, help us today. This doesn't happen. Well, I'll go and look for some way to. This, this. I, I hope the network will be good now. It doesn't happen regularly because I think the se the last one was each free. Second to the last one, mm -hmm. we had issues with the network on the other end, but you know, we're it's able fine, to. Now. Let's just continue. Okay. So, my next time. Okay, so as I was saying, um, mm -hmm. so they usually say, so there must have been a reason why they, they made that statement. Right. So what do you think drove people to there must have been something because there is no do they, is there any term for female? Like females are this. So I think the society we are in, let me use the Nigerian culture for example, has given too much of um has been too hard on both genders. Now, but it's more I mean harder on men than on women. Why I say it's harder on men is that the old, the old, I don't want to use the word forcefulness. The old pressure we put on men is more of untold, unlike women. Women's own, it's verbalized. They tell you what is expected of you. They tell you statements like, oh, you should maybe at, by the time you're in your 20s, they are reminding you, you should be married, you should have kids, you should do this, you should do that. Well, for the women and well, for the men, it's, oh, you, you should. Um, you should be able to support a family. You should already be, you know, paying your, your siblings school fees or, you know, be able to give to others in the society and all of that. Can, you, can we hear me? I can hear you, but it's looking like your voice is reverberating on Dennis's side. Hi, Dennis. Oh, can you hear me now? Hi. Yeah, I can hear everybody. Can everybody hear me, though? It's much yes. better now. 
Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. It's, it's okay. A matter of time. So, um, so then is the question is about how society like do you really do you also agree that society has put so much pressure on men? I think that's like a way to frame the question. Um, well, no. In other like the 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 question is so much pressure on men. For because I I feel like for people to to come up with that term, men has come. It must have been something like there must have been something that triggered that that sentence because I don't think there's something called females are something. So I I think I think the word I think why that is triggered or why that statement people make that statement a lot is because human nature naturally is selfishness. We're all inherent. Well, 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 well. If I've been honest. We are all naturally being raised to look out for ourselves before we look out for the other person. So as a result is, of that, people would rather that protect themselves. What did you say? I say it highly depends on the way that the person has been brought up because I'm here to disagree with now, this statement. Now, let me, let me land on my point. Now, being that, when parents naturally are training their kids or raising their kids, they tell you to look out for yourself. Yeah, be in the midst of people, you know, look out for people, but don't leave yourself behind. People are going to be, some parents will tell you that, oh, people are, people are naturally wicked, people are inherently evil, whatever you do, watch your back, your friends will stab you. They give you these doom messages a lot. And before you know it, you can't seem to find one person to trust, even though there are people literally waiting around you for you to trust them. So, a way around it, yes, a way around this is that you actually have to, you can do everything right and you would still find that one person who is going to disappoint you. That's inevitable. Now, back to what, what, back to what TJ was saying, which is that people make that statement, oh, men have come, women have come. Because of the selfishness of a whole lot of people, you know, the oh, I've had so many bad experiences and as a result of that, I am going to rather generalize that everybody around me or every woman is evil or every man is evil based on the different um, experiences that we've had with maybe just 10 or 20. Some people would rather generalize that oh, because I've had sad experiences with 10 men or 20 men, therefore I'm going to conclude that men are terrible people that you should run away from. That's a very um, wrong idea to ideology to hold on to because you're about to have a saying which roughly translates that if you close your eyes for a bad person to go, I mean, to pass in front of you, you literally would not know when a good person passes to because your eyes are closed. You're being purposefully blind. You're being, you're being blind on purpose to the fact that a good person can exist anywhere and at any time. So yes, are there terrible people? Of course. Are there also good people? Of course. Now, you should take life as whatever happens, I'm going to get the good and the bad. All I need to do is to hold on tight to the good, yeah, learn from the bad, and leave it behind where it ought to be, not necessarily in front of you. So that's the way I see it. And I understand those that have that shared experience, and they use that statement, oh, men have come, women have come. I do not blame them. They have refused to leave the past where it ought to be, the past. Yeah. No. Oh, my God. Okay. Dennis? <laughs> um, Are you there? Yeah, I am. I am. I'm listening, and uh, it it was a great point. It was a great point. Uh, firstly, when we're trying to judge uh, anybody, man, woman, or whatever the other nine hundred seventy-five thousand genders are, but I mean, wait, uh, there are nine hundred seventy-five thousand genders now? No, I'm being. <laughs> I'm being a jerk and I'm please, being sarcastic. Please do not confuse but, um, I mean, do not uh, me. It was, it, was a, it was a great point, in my opinion, because, yeah, firstly, uh, we have to judge people by the, by the human aspects rather than... Uh, yeah. You know, if, 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 I, if I may uh, spill uh, my tea on that, it's, uh, you know, uh, we've come to this point where um, there has been uh, more aggression between, for example, on the side of men, and for example, in the cases of domestic violence. Yeah. Obviously, there have mm -hmm. been many reports of uh, male violence. But, yeah. Um, 
You know, it dates uh, to the very beginning of uh, something that we now call society. Way back when people started, you know, having hierarchy and living as a government and uh, forming social groups. Because back then, it didn't matter as today how smart you are. Well, of course it mattered, but, you know, brute force was the way to survive and... Uh, that's where uh, men got their role as the, you know, the protectors and everything and the stereotypes that men are stronger and women have to stay at home and stuff. And uh, what, what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say is that it's been led on since the very beginning of something what's called society and the structure has remained till the present day. And uh, especially uh, during the industrial revolution, men started going and working on the factories and they were coming home from a hard day of labor, very tired, very unhappy about their life and beating it out on their children or women. And, you know, that's where the men are scum stereotype is coming from, mostly. Um, mm. Which, uh, to a certain point, yeah, okay, it's, it's fair to say so. But if we look at it, uh, we really have to think about the social classes. Uh, mm. Between which social classes is uh, domestic violence most common? Between which social classes is mm. general education? You see, not everybody gets taught manners. Somebody grows up on the streets and the hood, you know, and, and the last thing they care about is manners, politeness, and uh, some uh, chivalry or tact in general. So... Um, mm -hmm. I mean, especially with now this case with uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard going on, uh, it's 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 quite, uh, it's it's quite funny to watch uh, because, uh, in my opinion, uh, I mean it's it's too late now to really uh, maybe uh, ten years ago Johnny Depp would have really been you know messed up of this, but today. Um, Thanks to people like TJ, um, this um, awareness of the fact that we're both sides are responsible for the things that are happening, usually, um, the awareness is spreading and now it's being judged more equally and more fairly, in my opinion. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're making me blush. <laughs> Someone just asked a question, TJ. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I want to question to you. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm seeing it. What are the type of social classes before we talk about domestic violence? So we're not here to talk about domestic violence, but um, if you would like to shed some light, Dennis, on the types of social classes and make us feel uh, it. Yes, of which... course. I'm talking about the primitive division of the society in terms of the wealth that a family possesses, lower class, middle class, Me and upper class, class. And the high class. Um, because it has been statistically proven and it's a fact that people mostly, I do not generalize, I do not say all, but I also can't say few. Um, it, is, it is a fact that among the lower classes, uh, the general satisfaction of people with their life, with their life condition and their labor and their employment and in general, the happiness. You know, because the happier the person is, the less likely they are to be aggressive or trying to, uh, you know, lose their frustration by hurting someone else. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I was talking about, the, the quality of life that people have nowadays. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it, it, it is not a full justification, but at some point there there is something to do with the quality of life that people have, which, you know, then leads to the discussion about their behavior. I, I agree with you because I was even going to mention at some point that something, there's, there's a statement that a friend made one time that stuck with me saying, before you judge people based on, I mean, before you judge people for how they treat you, remember that you guys do not have shared experience. Your shared experiences are few. That was the way it puts it. It said, your shared experiences are few and that you were raised by different characters. So say, for example, your parents taught you that kindness means that 
you maybe you have two things. You know somebody that needs one, you give it to them. Some people's parents taught them that, oh, wait till you have five before you even give one out to someone else. So we have to, some people, that, that was what the person was able to explain to me that, look, before you judge somebody or take what they've done as very terrible or bad, remember that they were raised really differently from you. So extend a little bit of grace. That was the way the person put it. I extend, he said, I'm not saying condone bad behavior, but there are some things that you have to be willing to, con um, to um, expect people. I mean, not, not expect. You, there are some things you have to be willing to give grace to people for and understand yeah. that you are not the same with them and your experiences have helped you get to this point. There's, they'll catch up, but maybe eventually, but not at the moment. So. Wow, cool. Thank you so much. Hi! You both are loaded. I love it. I knew this session was fire. That's why the witches and the wizards don't want the, the network to work. Yeah. Don't mind me. I was just joking. So the second one is simple men, complex women. And the reason why I simplified it to that is because uh, of this question. The question of, because I remember when I was, um, thank you, Marion. The person said you guys are overloaded. So I remember when I was preparing for this uh, this series, this series of Let's Talk Masculinity, and then a guy told me that, you know what, men are simple, women are complex. So I want to ask that, who would like to go first? What, can you just shed more light? Do you agree? If not, what's your view on that? Um, well, um, how about I start us off and then uh, we can have a female go ahead, opinion please. about it? Does it sound yeah, great? Go, for right? go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah. So in terms of complexity, I would like to say um, men are simple. There is literally no complexity in us, but that's from my point of view, of course. And my point of view, <laughs> by no matter, by no means, is the like the truth. The you ultimate. Know? Yeah. Everybody, everybody has their own point of view. But I would like to say, you know, um, it, it sounds stereotypical to a certain extent. Uh, you know, watching sometimes some videos on YouTube or IG where they go like. When a lady says no, it means yes. And then when she says she's okay, she's not. Uh, yeah, okay, those are stereotypes. But let's be honest. They are built on a little bit of truth. Aren't they? No. Because we, well, I mean, it is my observation. And um, it is our observation as guys. We have trouble understanding ladies sometimes with the way they are trying to bring the thoughts across uh and we are very simple if i say i'm right okay. i'm okay i'm going to let you learn so i would explain I'm from that right. point there's no hidden context behind it and um yes of course we have our uh, side of complexity in terms of yeah we are also people and people are complex in general as beings. Okay, right? good our, point. Um, mm -hmm. our mental health is a very complex uh, concept. And um, but besides that, besides that, I can say, and I will speak for ninety percent of men on Earth. We are simple as hell. We say what we want, okay. and we mean what we say. Oh, okay. that's integrity. Okay, okay, that's we see you. Okay, we see you. <laughs> uh, have you have, have you made your point? Let me let me now let me now give you my report. Help now. Absolutely. I I'm going to start with a bit of story. 2020, I almost lost two friendships. Well, I ended up losing both of them, sort of, but they were my best friends, both guys. And what started the whole conversation was. Hey, your, women are so complicated. One of them is girlfriend was on a group page with me and the two guys. So when he came on the group page and said, oh, my, um, women are so complicated. I wanted to tell him, don't be a dolt. Your girlfriend is right here. You're not going to give her the right impression saying that women are complex. First off, she's not me. I can take some words from you and I'll change it for you. Now, I corrected him that he shouldn't have made that statement. So he apologized and that was the end. But... I felt he would apologize. Then he came back and said, oh, it's serious. 
for example, his mom is quite complicated. She never says this. She never says that. When people say women are complicated, one of the first things you need to understand is that we are not operating from the same manual. Men, a whole lot of men are more logical. Women are more emotional. Women are, women are, should I say, we are built to be able to say, this is what's going on in my head amongst ourselves. And, you know, oh, I'm sorry, sis. Oh, I can relate with you. Oh, I'm sorry you're going through this. What can I do to help you? But for men, you guys are often not knowing what to do because men are sort of raised to not really express themselves, you know, deal with it yourself. But for women, we thrive in that thing of being able to share what you're going through and find another woman who feels the same way and can tell you, oh, this happened to me too and this was what I tried and it worked for me and you probably will try it and it will work for you. But for men, it's a hey, bro, and then you go through it and then you're, you get, you're, you're able to say, a hey, bro, I went through this Oh, and then they're like, oh, okay, okay. And then everybody goes. Yeah. But for women, oh, sis, this is what is happening. I'm stressed out. And then they're like, oh, sorry. I, I, I can understand. And they'll probably yeah. help you find solutions to it. You, you, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say, um, CJ. Yeah. And, um, then yeah. So the reason why a whole lot of people feel that women are, which I already said before, that women are um, complicated is because women tend to apply emotions to things. If we don't feel some type of way here, we probably won't. If we can't associate an emotion with it, we would have a hard time. If it's not ministering to our emotional side, we would have a hard time being able to, you know, resolve whatever it is. But if it is for men, not that, okay, so, um, Maria, not that men don't have emotions. It's just that men have been taught to ignore their emotions. That's why some men, they, they, they like a woman. They actually want to be with her, but they would rather ignore the emotions they are feeling. Instead, they'll go with the logical side of them. If I'm with her, what do I logically? That's the way men see things. Emotionally, that's the way women see things. I'm not saying we don't have some women that are the, the odd ones out who see things with, with logic. And then there are some women who see things from both sides, both logic and emotion. Same way we have some men who see things from logic and emotional side. We have those kind of people. But for those who are emotional <laughs> now, let's not forget that, let's not forget that whether male or female, nobody's complex. It's just because we are not, you know the way they say perspectives. I can see a six and you can see a nine. That's why it looks like some people are, comp women are complex and men are um, simple. You are seeing a six. But because you're not seeing it from the other person's perspective, you'll be tempted to actually insult them and say, are you blind? Can't you see it? It's not that they are blind. You are just seeing it from a different, like for example, I am short-sighted. I wear glasses because I am short-sighted. Someone else will wear my glasses and would say something, would say, oh, I, I can see clearly with your glasses. And I wear somebody else, I wear someone else's glasses and I'll be able to see perfectly well. You understand? <laughs> no, you understand what I'm trying to say, basically. So that's why we feel Aye. women are complex and men are simple. Some women, if you ask some women, they will also tell you men are complex. This minute they want to be loved and baby. The next minute you're asking them what's wrong with them and they would rather not tell you. So isn't that also a source of complexity? Mm. I don't know if wow. you understand me, okay. CJ. Did you hear what I just said? I, I get you. I, I get you. Can you repeat the last statement? Because I was sneezing that time. But Mario, Ma Mario, can you Mario come to the line? To Mario, it's obvious that Mario has a lot of things to say. Is Mario your friend, Dennis? Um, yes, he's my, she's my friend. She? Oh, she. She says she's masculine in nature. Can we, can you, she's would you like to come to the line? Um, well, actually, um, <clears throat> I have been reading a few comments of Mario between uh, listening as well. It's Marion, yeah. uh, by the way. Marion, I, okay, Marion, sorry about that. I have, um, I have one thing that I found that I agree with is that um, when, uh, we, when it comes to showing our emotions, unfortunately with uh, men, what happens is uh, a lot of times uh, when we show our emotions, we, uh, well, um, 
our emotions get used uh, against us. But uh, again, you see, it's an argument. I'm sorry, you've been meeting terrible people. Not only for men, you know. Um, for example, I mean, in general, in public, when there's interactions between people, showing your emotions uh, is like bleeding in front of a shark. You know, it's uh, it's it's dangerous. It's 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 only okay to show your real emotions with close people that you know that will uh, not. Take, um, you know, I have a great story story to tell related to this question about complexity of men. I uh, have a very good friend and he in fact has joined the stream. I'm not sure if he's on now, but it's, uh, it's Alex. Um, we, we've had a dispute about a year ago. Um, I'll not go into details, but we basically had a fight uh, because uh, uh, we had a dispute, a little dispute before, and we both said things about each other, and uh, then we've made peace, but then some things that have been said came up, you know, and uh, the way we dealt with it, yes, I have said some things which I regret about my friend, and he got to know about it. Um, what he did was, yeah, he has confronted me about it, um, but when... Uh, <laughs> He's realized that, you know, he's confronted me and that uh, it, it, it's actually such a little thing. Yeah. Inside, we had a conversation and he told me, yo, look, I understand that we've had a fight. This has been going on. And uh, what matters really now is the way we solve it. Are you mad yeah. at me for something? I am not. Am I mad at you for something? I'm no longer. So do these words actually mean something? And I said to him, no, they don't. Alex is watching us right now. Hey, that's him. Hi, Alex. Oh, thank you for joining, Alex. That's the person that has really opened my eyes to the simplicity that we can reach in terms of solving really like easiest disputes that there exist uh well, actually no sorry i'll rephrase it um solving <laughs> hard disputes which can actually be made very easy and very clear and as of that time as of that point in time we have developed such a strong uh trust relationship with this guy that uh we can now talk about anything and i know for sure that next time we don't agree over something um we will talk instead of doing these baby uh, yeah. insults and uh, back and forth and argument another and uh oh. to be honest i feel like this is the way to solve problems and we guys are perfectly capable of it i cannot say that women are not but from what i've been experiencing around if there was two ladies in our place <laughs> no. Same conflict. no way in hell they would have solved it the way we did. I agree no, with no. you, but no. one other thing I agree with I agree with Dennis sadly. But one other thing I've also come to realize <laughs> is that what pushes you no, know, I've had guys who they just refuse to settle with me until I reached out to them. Now what makes the difference is not because of the gender. I think it's more of a personality issue. A whole lot of people do not know how to swallow their ego and say, hey, I'm sorry, and I'm about to lose a very important friendship or a very valuable friendship because of my pride. I've had men who I had fights with, and they are, okay, I had a friend who, we both misunderstood each other at some point, and I left his house really angry. I traveled to Lagos to spend some time with this person, and it was a case, it was almost like a case of love loss. I liked you, I wanted to date you. The next morning, the story changed. And then I, I got angry and left. Two weeks after, this person reaches out and they wanted to carry on like nothing happened. And I refused to talk to them. I refused to let that continue, like just continue the relationship and the friendship. So a month after, he reaches out and says, hey, I already thought about this and I realized that I did you a great injustice by not communicating clearly what I wanted and not letting yeah. you know that my choices had changed and asking if we're still on the same page. So it's more of a personality thing. It's more of a, some people do not know how to communicate. I am going through something. 
I do not know how to say, hey, I would rather be on my own than talk to you about it. Or you've hurt me. And instead of me now telling you, um, this is what you've done to hurt me. And the logical about it, I'm not attached so much emotions to it. And not be all about, I'm going to make you feel the amount of pain I have felt. That's why it feels like a whole lot of people, that's why it seems like some people are complicated. Plus, another thing I've also come to realize is that people grow from time to time. The fact that you have gotten to that point where mentally you're able to get, you're, you're able to resolve a fight with a friend, maybe the same day or as soon as you can. Some people have not gotten to that point and it's totally fine. It is now up to you to now say, oh, I'm going to, I am going to need you to come to that level, to come to that level of growth that I have achieved. Or if they can listen to you and they are willing, because it's one thing to say, I can listen to you. I want to hear you. It's another thing to be able to say, excuse me, excuse me. Yes. It's another thing to be able to say, you, you're saying something I feel I can learn from and I am willing to say the things you've told me. So it's not everybody is capable of it. Both males and females are capable of being that stubborn edit. I have friends that call, I have a child that they actually, because they are pansexual. I mean, I said pansexual. They are non-binary. Yeah, they are non-binary. My child used to, my, I call them my child because we, we, we've known each other for years now and they call me mommy. So they call me bull-headed pixie. Why? Because I am stubborn. Because when they say, oh, you shouldn't have done this, I'm like, I did it, so what? Maybe much later, they come to agree with me that, okay, you did something that was actually right. And then other times, it, bite, it comes to bite me in the behind, and I'm like, oh, I should have listened to you. But we get, mm. we've gotten to that point where we're both able to say, hey, I made an error in judgment. Either of us is able to say, hey, I made an error in judgment earlier, but I am willing to get beyond, I mean, to get past this. Yeah. Which means I am willing to leave all of this behind and move on. So it's on. irrespective, anybody can actually be complicated and anybody can also be... <laughs> Mario, you can't call me money. <laughs> anybody, <laughs> can <laughs> <laughs> anybody can be complicated. Anybody can also be simple. I have people who call me very simple because I am very down to earth. CJ knows me. I am down to earth. I am playful, but the moment someone begins to cross my boundaries, I let them know that they are crossing boundaries. For somebody like that who does not respect boundaries, I will come up as complicated. But for somebody who understands that a boundary is being crossed, they will say, oh, she's quite simple. If you do any she will let you know that you're crossing their boundaries. So it, I think it, it depends, like I said earlier, it all depends on perspectives. Uh, okay, you know what? You guys have dropped so many points. I don't know where to even start. <laughs> so I think because I think number one, number two, number one is that question is actually complicated in itself. Yeah. Let's be realistic. Because mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. thing I'd like to say is the makeup of a woman is totally different from the makeup of a man. For example, we all have this. What do you uh, mean by makeup? Yeah, the body makeup. We all have uh, oh, okay. different ways in which we're built. But one thing that I feel that added to the complexity of women, I, I stand to be corrected, mm -hmm. but one, there's one thing that I feel like actually made it, I don't want to say, I don't want to say quote and unquote words, but I, let me just speak my truth, is the womb. I think... The, the reproductive system of a woman has added the complexity because there you are the yeah, high I and agree. low moods the of hormones and everything else, you, know. you know that's what I feel and on the contrary because I, I remember growing up my elder sister kept telling me that why didn't I come to the head of a man but I don't want it I want to be a man. And it's not because she's saying she wants to be trans or she wants to change her gender. But she has actually, I feel she has actually seen men and she has seen that they don't menstruate. <laughs> they don't know the things I'm going through when it comes to menstruation. They don't, they don't, they don't know they don't the struggle my through. hormones put me through. What are you saying, Dennis? 
We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Oh my uh -oh. god. Oh, Dennis, we, can't we can't hear, hear you. you. We do not. We do not. That's that's. Ah. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Dennis. Excuse me. Mario. Mario said the womb. I said. Oh my God! What's I'm going so, on? I just added to what. You said. Do not. Yeah, but. Uh oh, Dennis, your network is terrible at the moment. Should get better. Yeah, yeah. Now we can hear you now. I can't, but, in, but wow. Can, uh -oh. uh, I think he wants to rejoin. Uh, but let's yeah. let's just continue. Let's just continue. So the hormones and the the like the moods, the complexity of that alone, I feel that is one big now, thing. Now, what if what if I also tell you that? A whole lot of women use the hormones and every other thing as an excuse to be yes. terrible. And True. I, for one, I tell people, hey, you can have a very terrible period and you don't have to take it on, out on people. If you mm -hmm. feel you're going through something and your hormone is the cause, you can take a break. Let people know that, hey, I'm about to go through a crazy time of my life. I need support. I need all the care that I can get. I need all the care and support that I can get. Um, because I'm going through something that I cannot explain, basically. So while people are using hormones, yes, I can tell you that the only the average time a woman catches a break in a month, I don't think it's up to a week. Thank because you. Because as you're coming off the period, you're getting into ovulation, and then your body decides, and then all of this is happening in your body. Some you are well aware of, some you're only seeing the symptoms, and then you're like, oh, what is happening? In a day, a woman can go from five, six emotions, can go from, uh, I just want to go out and have fun with the girls. And then the next day, I mean, the next hour, uh, they're like, I feel so terrible, I feel so bad. I feel, and you're like, where are you? you were, you were, it's not a fault. It's so It's not because, it's not because like, using it as excuses. It's just because this is what the hormone does, the, our hormones does to us. But where I draw the bounds is, um, is for those people who take it out on other people because their hormones are making them act up. It's a totally uncalled for excuse. I do not, I do not stand with people like that. Okay, okay. So talking about hormones, Dennis, do you feel that like men to go through this hormonal thing? Because we don't know. Um. Well, first of all, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. Perfectly. Brilliant. So I'm, I'm using. Everything that I have that's colder than cool it down. Hopefully, it works. I'm engineering behind the scenes. Wow, thank um, you. So, um, so, uh, <sighs> um, no, uh, no, we, we actually do not have this, this thing, you know, it's um, like uh, not on regular basis. Not on regular basis, you know. Um, in fact, I, if speaking for myself, when I am really attracted to someone, and Dennis, uh, we can't hear you. I think uh, we are losing a lot of things you're yeah, saying. Okay. Of course, then like the hormones go act and out and you're doing things that you do. Hmm. Yeah, no, can Hello. you hear Dennis? I it's can't hear Dennis. I think it's trying to reconnect. Yeah, I don't know what the problem is exactly. So um, I want to quickly answer. I'll disagree with uh -oh. the Dennis, we can't really yeah. hear you. Your line is breaking. Hold on. Oh dear. Now while we're waiting for Dennis's network to reconnect, uh, yeah. Marian is saying, "Can my hormones be friendly enough for me to use them as a camouflage?" Um, no. No. 
if we're being uh-huh. honest, the only thing women can do that their hormones can be friendly is probably to change some lifestyle. It took me it took me a while to know. Okay, for example, I had painful periods two to three months, close to four months like that, like that, and I kept having to go to the hospital. And then the doctor was telling me, oh, it's just your hormones acting up. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. And I had to keep taking um, injections, um, not injections, drugs. Yeah. And all of that. Now, some would also tell you, you know, eliminate some kind of food, eliminate sugar, eliminate this, eliminate that, change your, L- yeah. um, your lifestyle, you know, eat elderly, eat more fruits, eat more veggies. So some, some kind of lifestyle would help you be able to manage your hormones while some will just, you know, tip it off the edge, basically. So that was for, um, for uh, Marion. So go ahead, please. So Dennis, you were saying you guys don't have the or any hormonal thingy. Hey, um, I, we can't hear you now. You can't hear me. Okay, okay. I I think what the issue uh, is is that um, my phone is overheating, and as it's overheating, okay. it's okay. not capable of processing everything at once. Um, I'm I'm so okay. so sorry. That's what I'm limited to. Mm-hmm. I'm not the richest person in the world. Thank you. So thank you. Um. Yeah. Um. I yeah. But I agree. Yeah. Lifestyle uh, lifestyle definitely has uh, impact on uh, our behavior and on on our okay. uh, on our okay. ability to control our behavior to control our emotions. That I, right. I totally agree with. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, as you know, uh, it it is a fact that, for example, people that are uh, really, really deeply involved with drugs or some alcohol addiction, something that really Mm -hmm. has big impact on behavior at the moment, they're also having trouble with keeping their cool generally throughout all the time. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, really a valid point. That okay, thank you, thank you so much. Lifestyle good. really okay. Influences. Let's go on. I hope I hope we're that's able to finish. Point. But I I've, I've enjoyed our, our discussion so far. Best by the network. So the the third one is understanding metrosexuals, LGBTQ, and heterosexuals. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so she knows why I'm dancing. I I really really have huge respect for metrosexuals. I like them. I would love to have one well, of them let's, um, let's, let's on, on my friend list. I the really meaning? like them. What's the meaning? The metrosexual. Can you give us the meaning of the metrosexual? metrosexual uh, yeah, metrosexuals. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, are guys who they love to do things that women love to do. For example, metrosexuals find delight in putting on makeup, um, going shopping. Can you hear me, Dennis? Can anyone hear me? I can hear you. I'm here. Hello. I'm here. Okay, so met- okay, so metrosexuals are people who they they don't mind doing things things that society naturally considers feminine are the kind yeah. of things they like to do. Um, for example, they don't mind wearing the lip, lip gloss. They don't, um, they don't mind, um, you know, dressing up. I mean, they don't mind wearing lip gloss. They don't mind incorporating things that women naturally would use into, um, some other things that they use. They don't mind going shopping. They don't mind cooking. They don't mind, um, some people yeah, are softly, yeah. uh, um, sorry, metrosexual, yeah. while some people are fully metrosexual. Fully blown. That's the way I like to say it though. Do you know there's this person, um, th- this influencer, Enio Lua, Enio Lua, the lip gloss Enio. boy, the lip gloss boy, is is I think he's metrosexual. In he a is way. actually, yeah, proudly metrosexual. So what? You, oh, Dennis. What you're saying is, is that uh, Dennis, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Dennis. Oh dear. <sighs> okay, okay. We can't hear you, Dennis. 
we don't know what the problem is. So, like, okay, let's continue while they're, they're yeah. trying to reconnect. So, uh, the first time I saw Enyo Lua, ah, uh, what's wrong with your own network too, Yan? <laughs> no, don't worry, I've gone back to the spot I was where the network was okay. I can hear you now. Okay, so the first time I saw Enyo Lua in painting his nails, using lip gloss, doing eye eyebrows and everything I reposted, yeah i reposted immediately like i just reposted i kept saying yes yeah i'm i'm sorry i'm a very libra person it's not it, it's not me it doesn't i feel like it doesn't make them less of a male or less masculine mm -hmm. or it does not even make them gay it's they just mm. want to do they just want to do it like why can't we allow them it's for example very much. For example, it has been it. argued by some people. Some people have been arguing about Ari Styles, a famous musician, that, oh, why would Ari Styles like to incorporate some um, female dresses into his dressing? People have been talking about Ari Styles using tarot. Ari Styles is a, a, um, was a former member of One Direction. And Ari Styles, okay. yes, tells. A lot of Ari people Styles. believe that tells are for women. So when they see men putting on things, I, I think, I don't know how true this statement I'm about to make is, that Ari Styles is also a metrosexual. So because you see women wear some things, and then there are some men who are genuinely curious about it, like, oh, I think I like this thing. I think it looks good on me. I think I should try it. And I actually enjoy <laughs> doing it. And it's totally fine. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear so, you clearly uh, now. Men wearing skirts before was called being Scottish, and now it's called being metrosexual, right? <laughs> oh no, no, no! We're not talking about this. no, no, no. Okay, okay. we're not talking about the cultural this side. Is, actually, culture wise, some people wear some things. But we're just uh, saying, yeah. for example, men want to. There now, I think there's a thin line between being a cross dresser and being a metrosexual. Cross dressers yeah. often want to wear what the other um. What's it called? It's often for the males that want to, you know, wear what women are wearing, wear the old full attire, be a drag queen, you know, be all fancy and enjoy themselves. It's just like a play date, being on a play date kind of thing. While metrosexuals, they just want to be men who are caring about their face. They want to fix their lashes. They want to fix their nails. They, they, are, they are totally masculine. They just want to, they like this thing and they want to share that experience. That's all. It doesn't necessarily mean, yeah, are there some of them that are gay? Of course. But they would also tell you that this is just me enjoying the things that women enjoy, I mean, liking the things that women um, enjoy and doing, I'm a woman. CJ knows I don't like makeup. I don't like this. I don't like to paint my lips. I don't fancy any of those things. But if I see a guy that likes it, I know a guy who does not mind wearing um, waist beads. Well, for everybody, they feel that's crazy. But for me, I'm like, no, uh -huh. I'm totally cool with it. It's, Yay. See, I like it. <laughs> I, I, in fact, life is an understatement. I love it. I love it too. Sorry, I can't hide it. I can't, I, I can't hide this one. Trust me, I can't. Because <laughs> it's, I think it's kind of personal for me. <laughs> because... <laughs> Because I have lots of, I have younger, like my siblings are males. I have male siblings. I know, I've seen them. I've seen the way they do. You know, I started off as a beat maker. My younger ones mm -hmm. would literally make beats with me. And they were males. You know, I have a, a family member that we actually call him, he's on the live. We actually call him Black Indian. Because there's a way he just there's his gesticulations, the way he does his mannerisms, like he's kind of close to the way a female does. And then sometimes we're like, "What are you doing?" Like, oh, that kind of person, so it's fun having them around. It's fun for me. It's fun because it's like you get to see the world from a totally yeah. like it's not like the stereotype of yeah, I'm a man. I can no, 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 no. like I love. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I can't, I, I just love it. I think it's just me. And I feel like when we have people like that around, we should be very careful not to make them feel like an outcast. Actually, that's where I'm going. Yeah. Uh, 
it's not even because I love them. I think it's because they are human beings. Recently, They're I saw They're not even trying to hurt anybody. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I saw a picture of Adekwe Gold recently. He was putting on pearl. Like three or four layers of pearl with pendant. Oh my God. I was blown away. I was having a very bad day. Yeah, no. I was having a very bad day. But as soon as I saw that picture, as soon as I saw that picture, I said, yes, this has made my day. I don't know. Because I'm like, what? I'm serious. He had studs. He had this pearl necklace. He had his weaves on. And I'm not saying he has to be gay. He doesn't have to be gay. I just, I just love it. And sometimes we get these questions like, okay, would you like someone like that to be your man? Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, mind. it means that if I'm going shopping, I'm taking him with him, and I can trust his sense of judgment when it comes to fashion style. Let's not going out with him. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, um, we can I, hear you now. I um, I you know, I for example myself like to look all right, so I take care of my nails, my hair take showers, I like to smell well, dress well, and all of that. And you know, <laughs> I very frequently, and my friends have been laughing uh, at me a lot for it, not, not for a particular reason, just, just because it's funny. Um, you know, I get a lot of guys stopping me on the street and going directly to ask me my number, and then I go like, yo man, <laughs> Like, you can have my number. I, 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 I have I, different preferences, you know? I have completely <laughs> different preferences. It's like, oh, exactly. okay, sorry. And, 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 you know, I think to myself, like, what is wrong? Like, with, oh, okay, no, I, 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 I don't, I, I mean, actually, you know what? A guy approaches me, says I'm handsome, and wants to get my number. Yo, it does not ruin my self-esteem. It only raises it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, it's, because it's I mean, fun. if I look this good, if I, I look this good and all the genders are approaching me, I'm doing something right. <laughs> yeah. No, but you see, the, the point is, no, I mean, I'm, I'm getting more of it from ladies, of course. Ah, uh, no, Dennis! <laughs> well, we're, we're speaking facts, aren't we? Yeah, we so, are. <laughs> um, yeah, but, Hello, can so you hear me now? I do, I do yes. Like, in yeah. fact, we've had a we've had a funny story. I was in a nightclub with my friends, and um, mm -hmm. it was me, uh, one girl, and another guy. And so, uh, at some point, a random American guy approached us, and uh, he was like trying to blend in with the three of us. And mm -hmm. me and the other guy, we were thinking, okay, he might be trying to hit on our friend, our the girl. And we're like, okay, man, go for it. Like, we were thinking to ourselves, like, what are you waiting for? Just, just go for it, man. We're, we're, we're not her bodyguards. Just be nice to her. Come on, she, she's there, you know? And um, something completely unexpected has happened, basically. He leans over to me because it's quite loud in the nightclub. And he tries to, t and he's speaking to my ears, like, shouting, like, are you gay? I'm like, bro. <laughs> That's completely, well, I haven't expected that at all. I thought you were going to be my friend. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, man, no, I am not. I'm so sorry. And he just disappeared. But that, that's, that's not the funniest part. That's not the funniest part, you know. Um, it's something actually to do with the topic we're discussing. About five minutes after, a girl joins our group, and she's hanging out with us and stuff. And so me and my friend, the guy, we're thinking, okay, okay, she might be hitting a one on us now. Okay, fine, yeah, let's go. Let's let's show the best dance moves and be be cool. <laughs> and then she takes the girl okay. by the hand and she asks her something. Woo! And then in about a minute or two, she goes away. And the girl, she's just laughing. She's dying from laughter because she already knows what happened to me, what the American guy asked me. <laughs> and, and you know what? I asked her. Is, is it what I'm thinking about? And she's like, yeah, she asked me if I'm lesbian. And I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, we were joking about like, hey, you know what? Let's swap. Let's just. And you guys already <laughs> did all the dance moves. Yeah. Okay. So do you guys have gay friends? 
I do. Oh, I do. Of course. I don't think I have gay friends, except if I have one that hasn't come out. But <laughs> that you are thinking that hmm, is looking. Yeah, very, very all the quite suspicious. Very, very suspicious. <laughs> well, I, I do. That I suspect. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't say they are my friends. I would say about advances. Like I literally had and they've been stalking me for years. And I really don't know what I'm telling you, female. And I you know, it was it was so fun. Like I'm straight. I don't like I was talking with someone the other day. I know and then the guy was like You say? What did you not. say? I okay. am not Okay. Moving on. <laughs> ah. Okay. Moving on. Are you like <laughs> attracted to females alone or to both? Both. Okay. Okay. Both. Okay. Cool. Uh for me I think I, I think I want to still maintain this straight. This straight. This straight. <laughs> uh, this straight sexuality because I mean, what is the world without men? <laughs> don't mind me. <laughs> then, Dennis, Dennis, my... Dennis, don't, you don't want to do this to yourself. You don't want to do this to yourself, Dennis. <laughs> what do you say? You don't want to do that to yourself. The moment she said you still need men, and you're like, yeah, yeah, give that girl a bottle of whatever she drinks. You don't want to do that to yourself. Give me a bottle of whatever. But, but for me, I, I think I, I would really love to work with you, even though I've, I've had, you know, several, I don't want to call it, I think recently, I, I would say disappointment, not outbreaks. Yeah, because when they say outbreaks, I think I've really thought about it deeply. And I'm like, have I really been heartbroken? Yeah, but not like, like I thought I had been heartbroken. I think I've had several disappointments, several disappointing times. Okay which i've grown you know i've learned more about the the masculine gender and i found out that okay even after the old disappointment and everything i still want to be with a male as isn't that fabulous <laughs> and i have females whoa my guest networks are, are acting up. okay so I, and i have females like in my dm you know, stalking me for years, and I'm like, hey, I know, but I, I think I still want to be on the straight, on the straight gang side. I, if you, if you're gay, fine. I, I have no issues with you. Right now, I don't think I want to explore that side of me, if if it ever exists, <laughs> because they say never, say never. You know. <laughs> That, that's just the word. Never <laughs> say never. But, but, but really, because I'm a very spiritual person too, and I like to put God first. I don't know in my own. I don't want to call it religion, but in my own belief and faith, I don't know if my level of spirituality can allow that that gazing yet. I don't know. I've not explored it. But but I am not judgmental. I allow you personally. I allow you to be whoever. You. So far, you're not asking me. Why not? Like, that's get... where everyone should that's... leave. Actually. Yeah, that's because oh my god, what guys have that females don't have? Do you know that thing that males have? I don't want to say it on Instagram. Like, do you know that thing? Even though they've done a lot of are you seeing my facial expression? Yeah, and uh, they've seen that um... males have that females don't have. That thing that they usually do the artificial version. That thing I like it. I think I want to I explore that thing. <laughs> I want to explore that thing. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> that brings me to the number six question, actually. To wait or to to knock yeah. or to wait. So when I say I like it, now we, for me, I'm an advocate of. If you, I'm not, really I'm not. Understand it quite well. Can you hear me? Hello, hi. Dennis, we can't really hear you, Dennis. Ah, but BJ said a beard. No, it's not a beard. 
it's not a beard, it's that thing. Oh, B J, B J, no, B J is just trying to be naughty. B J, you know the word B J, Balaji, you know what B J? <laughs> yes. Yes. Dude, eh? Dennis, okay, Dennis. Yeah. Dennis, can, we can't really hear you. <laughs> oh my goodness! Don't worry, Dennis will be fine. I don't know why everyone's everyone's network is acting up when we're having a very interesting conversation that's when the witches and wizards know that they want to act up on this network a lot of you yeah no problem so that that brings me to the the sixth question i don't think we'll be able to finish everything today though the sixth question is to knock or to wait so what do you think because some people feel like okay yeah should we wait, you know, till we get married, or should we wait and practice mm -hmm. celibacy for a while? You because know, you see, one of the things I've come to realize is that it, there is no clear cut direction on how to start a relationship. Some people, some people meet on the first date. I mean, they meet the first time, they hit it off so good, they start dating. It leads to marriage. They have a forever, uh, forever happy, um, happily, for, uh, happily ever after. After well, there are some that. Well, there are some that, oh, they go, I've had, okay, now, I'm going to share my own personal experience. I've had relationships that were just a month. We met maybe a few weeks after we started dating, and it, it did not last. And I've had some that we met, we've been friends till date, we never dated, and it's, it's also been good. And then I've uh -huh. also had a relationship where we've been friends for a year plus. We ended up dating. A month after, it all still went to waste. So there is no clear cut. Oh, try this, try this. It will work. No. If people want to, if you are a guy that wants to have sex, that's sex before marriage, and your partner is willing to do that, go for it. If you are somebody who your partner does not want to do that, agree with whatever works for both of you. We can hear you. Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Oh, it's yeah. fine. All right. Fine. I'm sorry. I'll leave my camera off for a minute or two. It's I'm fine. trying to cool down this motherfucker. Uh, it's fine. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, uh, mm. I think um, it all comes down to the society that we live in. Yeah. Uh, to the culture. To the culture, religion, uh, beliefs, norms, and values. I mean, uh, me, myself, I uh, <laughs> do not think I will be getting into a marriage anytime soon, God forbid. Uh, but it's not because I don't want to take the responsibility mm. or because I am afraid. It's actually the other way around. Because when it comes to be a marriage, when it comes to a marriage, when it comes to having kids... I want to do it as responsibly as possible, which also includes being able to sustain a family, being able to uh, devote a time to a family, which uh, obviously comes with a marriage and family, you know. So I want to leave mm -hmm. it for later until I actually ha can, you know, have the facilities to do that. And when I do... I, of course, want to have a family and I feel that marriage is a, you know, it's great. It's, on, it's not only because of the papers and the division of assets. It's, 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 it's a tradition. It's something spiritual that keeps people together. Basically, same as religion. Uh, so, I, I, you know, in my opinion, those are great things, but I myself don't want to rush it. I feel like it requires responsibility, which I actually part of the responsibility. So, what is do you mean by facilities? When you have the facilities to. You have the money to take care of kids if it comes out of it? Well, um, what do I mean by facilities? Uh, what do I mean by facilities? Well, I mean specifically. Um, uh, so f let's look at it right now. For example, right now I'm studying, I'm working, I don't have a single minute of a day free from some, you know, things that are going around. Yeah, I go hang out with friends, but, you know, 
I don't want to keep, you know, I don't want to swap hanging out with friends for yeah. staying home with the family. I want to keep all the aspects of my social life intact and only add to it. What I mean by facilities is if I want to raise a child, I want my children mm -hmm. to go to prop good school. Yeah. I want them to be fed well, dressed well. I want them to live well. And that requires sure. first investing some time into growing yourself economically, mentally, socially. And only after when you have the facilities and what I call by facilities is money, career, I don't know, um, just, just, just being able to anchor down to something and live uh, instead of, you know, trying to survive. Uh, because what makes a happy family, in my opinion, is the sufficiency. So when the family is well fed, when there's no, you know, stress about where to find money to pay the rent next month. Is we're having a car to be able to take my kids to the zoo or somewhere else. I want the family to be happy. And for that to happen, there first has to be, I first sure. have to start being, representing something yeah. myself, you know. And only after I can nice. assure something good for my family, that's when I want to take a next step. And I feel that's what people should do because... Early marriages, yeah, I don't say they don't come out well, but yeah. it's very difficult to get it right. And usually it leads to stressful situations, which is why yeah. statistically young married couples are more, much more likely to get separated after a few years rather than True, I agree with you. Been, you know, people I that do. got married in I their do, late Dennis. 20s. You're right. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it work. For our aunties, our big uncles, and even some American celebrities, you know, like um, I remember two specific celebrities now that I know that got married to the men in their lives. <laughs> so you said facilities are very important, of course. So like the men in their lives are, they were like, you know, yeah, no, do you know like people that yeah. are, are retired they are. from their work, they've served. They've served like 25 years in service and then they want to settle down. Maybe they, they had a baby mama and then they haven't figured out life and probably at the end of their, maybe they're 40, then they're like, okay, yeah, I want to get married. I figure that those marriages actually work more. They like, they last more. So that point, you're, not, you're not being with them because you, you're not being with them for the old I don't know how to describe it, but you're not being with them because you have to be with somebody. At that point, you have a clearer focus to your life. You don't have to, you have more time for the mother, you have more time for the kids, you also have more time for yourself. So it's it's a thing of being able to have more time to do so many other things and not just one thing, that kind of situation. So I, I agree in, in a way, but I'm also for whatever works for you. Whatever works if for you. If you feel you if you feel you can have sex, if you feel you want to have sex immediately and you can you can undo whatever the results may be, by all means, go ahead. If you can't, then don't, don't bother trying to. Yeah, don't bother trying to. Okay, so um, because our time is really fast spent and we usually live here by seven, I'd like to ask what are the... Uh, things you would like to say to the average uh, male or average female or average person that wants to is, is confused about his gender or where he should be or his sexuality should i be here should i be there you know i don't know what for example people that grew up in homes that or people that are growing in homes that have two mummies you know they, they do it here in the uk because um homosexuality is legal here in the UK. So uh, people, some people have two mummies. Do you know? And two mummies that are like, yeah, mommy and daddy, but they are females. Do you get what I'm saying? And, you know, for someone like that, and it's like, okay, where do I start from in life? How do I navigate I tell, this? Kind I, tell of people, I tell people that one thing about sexuality, which um, um, this person also mentioned, I'm trying to remember their name. Uh, Terry. Looking for the chat. Terry. 
Terry said sexuality is fluid, and I totally agree with him. And the other thing about sexuality is that there is no one way, there's no one size fits all. You Like you also rightly said, never say never. You might feel that if you feel something is, maybe you notice something, you might want to take your time, check it out. Okay, what if it's just a curiosity that, that I needed to be sure of? What if it's actually really the way I feel? What if after I've checked the curiosity and I realize that, oh, this is not just a curiosity. This is something that is ingrained in me. This is the way I, be. for example, I know a lady who told me that last year she stopped liking girls. And I told her, oh, no, you did not stop. You actually eat that part of you. Why I said she eat that part of her is that she's already in her late 30s. Oh. So I have to tell her that she did not stop. She just eat that part of her. Now, for some people, some people as teenagers, they start to like women as much as they like boys. But because they've been taught to, you know, don't explore that, it's the devil's work and all of that, I would tell you, if you feel you're in an environment where that is not allowed, as annoying as I want, as annoying and hurtful as this is for me to say, protect yourself. Mm. Find a way to make sure that whatever you're doing, you are first safe because it is the person that is safe enough that can say, oh, this is the sexuality, this is the flag I'm flying, or this is the kind of person I am and all of that. If you're in a place where you are not accepted, go where you're loved. That's the first thing. Go where you're, go where you're loved. Go where you're celebrated. If you are confused, there's no rush. Nobody's saying, oh, everybody has to pick a sexuality before they are 50 or before the end of their lives. Some women did not even accept the fact that they were bisexual or lesbians until they were in their fifties. And that's totally fine. I know some women who have had to end their marriages because it took them years to realize that, oh, so all this while that I thought it was just a mere attraction, I really actually liked women. Wow. So I was just deceiving myself and trying. Yeah, I've, I've seen people like that. Yes, I see. There's a book you might want to read under the Udala trees. A very, it was written by a Nigerian lady. I can't remember her name. It talks about the struggles of a young lady who, she's lesbian. And she never really accepted us because it's set in Igbo land. She never really accepted herself. She got married. She loves her husband, of course. But she knows that the love she has for her husband is not as strong as the love she has for she met. She has for women. Made her, helped her accept herself more. It took her years. Then at some point, her husband started becoming violent towards her. And then she just had to tell herself, you know what? Apparently, her husband later got to know. And her husband kept keeping the correspondences between herself and uh, the lady, the woman she loves, keeping it away from her. And then she finally breaks free, goes somewhere else. They also highlighted the dangers lots of um, LGBTQ um, people face. Now, some people would say, oh, you're, you're bi, you don't have any problems. Yes, I'm a bit safe because for some men, oh, it's something to be delighted about. Oh, she, she likes both male and female, so which means I get to have three threesomes with an extra girl in the mix. While for some women, I get offended when people do that. So it takes some people time to know what they want, what they stand for, where they would like to go. Don't allow yourself to be boxed in a corner. Take your time. Don't say, oh, this is not for me. You know how they say, don't um, some, something unless, don't scratch it unless you're sure of it. Don't say, oh, this is not for me unless you're very sure that you would not have the same reaction that you've been having every other time. So take your time before even um, deciding. You might say, oh, I think I like women, I'm bi-curious or I'm bisexual. And then you'll see some things or some people or with time, you just change and you don't have any interest in it. It's totally fine. There's no right or there's no right or wrong way to it. So basically, so it just depends. Take your time. That's what I would just say. Wow. Dennis, <laughs> oh my God, you guys are just so full of fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am, um, you know, uh, I agree with a lot that's been said. Solid points. No cap. But, um, yeah, I would like to add that even though I also encourage people to really take their time hmm. and explore what is it that they want. I want to make a warning. I want to warn people. Um, you know, in the yeah. age of modern uh, information, the mass media and everything, 
the you know uh, all life of our like all our lives are being captured in stories on Instagram and everything and there's a lot more um kind of like you know these social interactions are much yeah you are yes you are frequent in the modern day i don't know if you, if if i'm explaining myself well yeah so um mm-hmm. you know uh Thank the concept you, of peer pressure is really really being extending and um what i think is there's a lot of people who are calling themselves bisexual yeah. or or gay or or mm, wanting true. to explore this side you know uh, they are forcing themselves um i'm not saying that all but i'm saying that some people do because they want to be in the trend they want to you know uh just you know just ride the wave of the least resistance and taking it back to the point that's been made um be yourself if you want to blend in it doesn't mean you have to you know say okay <laughs> i'm now bisexual <laughs> i'm an apache attack helicopter and stuff like that you do not have to because unfortunately many people are being forced into you know trying to explore sure. this side even if deep inside they do not feel like it's their thing right because mm-hmm. let's be honest it is really really dependent on genetics homo uh, like uh, homosexuality in general um uh, is a concept of uh genetic uh okay. difference wow it's uh, it's built in genetically into people and it's been proven by research by now so um uh yeah it depends also on the nurture but the biggest part of it depends on the nature and for what the nurture does yeah like the way we brought up i assume everybody's familiar with the concept okay. of nurture right yeah exactly so um i would just really like to encourage people to be themselves explore whichever side they want but do it not for the sake of um you know blending in or trying to follow what the society dictates or what's the coolest trend or um, anything most important is to be what you want so you said something about and uh enjoy life i have a quick question you, you said something about it being that genetic that what really do you mean by that exactly yes um so it is um it is a well known fact now uh proved by many researching uh proved by many researches that uh attraction to the same uh to the same uh sex even between the oh, like animals, a mutation the people is a genetical i don't want to call it a malformation if we call it a genetic but, mutation how come how come there are gays exactly it's a, how come it's a the lgbtq guys have always from, existed before now in the old roman empire they were there um no, they haven't ex- they have existed no they have existed they have it's only that earlier this concept well, was so really popular, and in many people. cultures it was even prohibited and uh, it was punishable and that's why only now with the freedom of speech and expression people can feel safe to come out and be what they want to be and by no means i say don't i say do do uh absolutely explore the uh, do, be what you feel you are who you feel you are um but it it is a proven fact to my knowledge of course which is limited and might not be the universal knowledge but to my knowledge i think i think uh, i've heard it from someone before too terry doesn't quite agree with the genetics thing but I, i think i've heard it from i've not actually read about I it i don't quite agree either okay <laughs> understand well, uh, you do not have to agree and i, I think i feel i feel some people it's it's, it's actually part of their like, like you said the, the nurturing and i think it's to some extent because i i've watched a, a film 
um, by Tyler Perry. It's a series. Uh, if loving you was wrong, I don't know if you've seen this show before. And you know this this guy. Yeah, I, it's. I think genetically, some some are just gay. That I think so. I think so. I'm going yeah. to have to go soon because I have another Zoom work meeting. So of course, like okay, it's, it's actually yeah. seven. So so we're actually wrapping up now. So, but thank you very much, guys. Um. I really, really appreciate you coming despite the network issues. We still, we are, we, we were able to smash um, four out of six. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are the real MVP. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Ian, for being so open and being Thank sincere. You. I Thank love you. it. I love it. it. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank I would you. like to do this again, maybe sometime in the future. Maybe. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Are we good to go now? <laughs> yes, okay. Peace out. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 We okay. do too. Bye bye. Okay, guys. Um. Wow. This session was hot. It's it's, it's a lot of layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. And this is like real talk, yo. I feel that we have to probably bring a new set of guests in order to continue this conversation so we can dig deep and then see if it is really, you know, if it's really worth what we are talking about. But don't worry. Um, next week, we are going to have um, another set of guests. It could be one, it could be two. And let's see how we can explore masculinity again. Okay. Till next time. I love you guys. Thank you for staying with me. Till this time on this show. My name is CJ Sunimi Olako Peace out. <laughs> uh.